Now it's our turn to swing. Okay. Now we're making a comeback, everybody. They're down to six. Okay. We're feeling pretty good here now. Okay. This is actually nice. They go swinging. Turn on high alert. We untap one of our rams. They sack. We block. And we block. Oh, did I... Wow. Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, we're going to be jumping into the Explorer format to play with a fun deck that actually focuses on how tough our creatures are. How tough are you? That's right. We're going to be jumping in with a deck that wants to, to power out your creatures, focusing on, again, their toughness as opposed to their power to do maximum damage and just go all out to overpower our opponent with our creatures in a deck that I am simply calling <laughs> Bant Butt Stuff. That's right, you heard me. I know what I said. Long time viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we jump right into it. So our Explorer Butt Stuff deck... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I can't help it, I'm, I'm being childish right now. Anyway, again, our deck is focusing on Bant colors of white, blue, and green. We're looking at an average curve of about 2.5, it's a little deceptive, but I'll explain why a little bit later into the video. We're looking at 24 creatures, 8 instants, 8 artifacts, 12 enchantments, and 20 lands. Okay, childish names aside, we're of course going to play a deck that focuses on toughness matters. For those of you who have never played a deck like this, mostly again we want high toughness creatures and low power because we want to try to buff up our defenses in order to turn them into offenses and destroy our opponent out of nowhere. So that's basically what the deck is trying to do. In order to do that, however, we're going to of course talk about first our highlights and what we're building around. From the new set of Karloff Manor, we have the Pride of the Hullclade. Pride of the Hullclade is a, woo, wow, it's an 11 mana 215 Crocodile Elf Turtle. Pause for one second, can we just talk about how awesome that creature type is? That's really, really sweet. Any case, it's a legendary creature that has this spell cost X less to cast, where X is a total toughness of creatures you control. It has defenders, so it can't just swing as it will. However, for 4 mana until end of turn, target creature you control gets plus 1, plus 0, gains whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card equal to its toughness, and can attack as though it didn't have defender. Wow, that is a really cool, awesome ability, and this, hopefully we're gonna try to see if we can take advantage of that at least once today. But even if we don't, the card of course allows us to then trigger off a lot of other cool things by using its other ability here. Otherwise, the other cards that are going to help us take advantage of our high toughness are going to be cards like High Alert here, a 3-mana enchantment that reads, Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, and creatures you control can attack as though they didn't have Defender. Sometimes that secondary ability, or actually it's technically it's third ability, that allows us to of course play 4 mana to untap a creature can help us out on the backswing if our creatures are again are tapped after they attacked. As for the other enchantment that helps us out here, we also have Assault Formation. So this 2-mana enchantment reads, Each creature you control assigns combat damage to each hold to its toughness rather than its power. For 1 green, you can have target creature with defender attack as though it didn't have defender. And for 3 mana, creatures you control get plus 0, plus 1 until end of turn. Also a super awesome card that helps us again just kind of layer on extra abilities that allow us to have our high toughness creatures and can allow our creatures to swing above their limits. With that, as far as the high toughness creatures we're going to take advantage of, working our way backwards here, we have Nyx Fleece Ram. Again, nothing super crazy here, but it's a 0-5 that also at the beginning of our upkeep can help us some gain a little bit of life. Really good against aggro decks because they're going to have a hard time trying to fight through this little sheep. Walking Bulwark here, another awesome card that has Defender, and it's 0-3. However, it has a secondary ability that allows us to then turn on a creature with Defender, giving it haste, and can attack as though it didn't have Defender, and assigns its combat damage equals to its toughness rather than its power. Although we can only activate it at sorcery speed, it's still an extremely awesome little card that helps us kind of circumvent some of the issues we have in the early game with our deck. As far as the other cards we have, we also have Saruli Caretaker here, another 0-3. This allows us to tap a creature down to add mana to our mana pool. Our other creature here we have is Market Gnome, so this 0-3 Gnome allows us to then gain some life and draw a card if it does die. We don't really care about the crafting ability since we don't really have anything to that. This is again just an early game blocker and attacker for us. And then finally, our only other one drop is Broker's Initiate. So this 0-4 Cat Citizen also has the ability to turn itself on and become a 5-5 if we really need to in a pinch in the mid to late game. And to round out our spells, we have a little bit of offense and a little bit of defense. So for defense, we have Tamiyo Safekeeping. You've seen me use this card
card many times. Any one of our permanents we can then target and then give it indestructible hexproof and we gain a little bit of life to stabilize. As far as offense, it does technically say tower defense, but we're using this as an offensive spell. Remember that our high toughness creatures want to convert that into power. So by powering up their defense, this card can be extremely powerful and shut down games very quickly. So tower defense basically just gives our creatures plus zero, plus five and reach. Sometimes also that reach ability can be great in a pinch against creature decks that have a lot of flying evasion creatures. And as far as the land base is concerned, we have pretty much, again, what you expect for a budget deck. So we have some plains, we have some forest, a single island, and we have some Spars headquarters, where that's where the remainder of our rares will go for sparing us. And then finally, Broker's Hideout here, which can then sack itself immediately to help fix our mana to get out exactly the mana we need. As far as your sideboard, we have a little bit of a hodgepodge, depending on, again, how you face it off against your opponent. If they're dealing with a lot of combo decks out there and control decks, Deafening Silence is going to be great for that. If we have some Artifact and Enchantment Hate and Haywire Might, really good and also helps us stabilize with the life gain. If your opponent is trying to go wide or go big, we have Griff's Boon here, so this can give one of our creatures flying, and also we can then cast the card later on in the mid to late game if we really need to get it back from the graveyard. Garrick's Uprising here can give all of our creatures trample. Remember that again, this won't trigger off its ability. However, we want it just for the trample ability, so that way we can push through damage against a lot of go wide token decks out in the format. So Guy Lantern is our catch-all, of course, for graveyard hate. And finally, a little bit of extra spice here, we have Dusk and Dawn. So Dusk side allows us to destroy all creatures with a power level three or greater you'll notice that not a single one of our creatures has a power level above two so this is actually a really sweet wrath against many of the go big creatures out there and then dawn here can then bring all of our creatures back with a power tell level of two or less from our graveyard to our hands so really really awesome card not too often you're going to need this but i love it as is and it's a bit of a pet card of mine is this janky toughness matters deck even capable of getting at least a couple of wins in explore good question well you're about to find out so as always let's take a couple matches into the explorer format and see how well our deck can do but before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. All right, my fiery friends, here we go. Are our butts tough enough to handle our opponent? Huh? Let's find out right now. So we do have some decent cards here, but we're a little awkward on our lands. Why does this always happen to us when it comes to these games? That's a fine, everybody. I'm not complaining, of course. I'm just making an observation. Maybe we should kind of reevaluate this a little bit later. Anyways, we're going to keep what I have, despite the fact that our mana is a little awkward, because I still believe we can get there with what we got. Okay, opponent's got Hive of the Eye Tyrants. Of course, they always have Thoughtsies. Totally not angry about that. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine, everybody. Let's go. Let's see what the what they throw away. I don't think anything really they see is going to threaten them immediately, but it's definitely going to be something they're probably going to want to pay attention to as the game progresses. All right, they throw away the Caretaker. Okay, so with that, let us play Island. I'm sorry, actually Plains, I mean. And then we'll throw down our Market Gnome. All right. Okay, they're Rakdos, so Blood Tide Harvester. No surprise there. Take a blood token. All right, so with that, we will play our island. Nyx Fleece Ram. Ba Ram you. Ba Ram you. Haunted Ridge. Well, the good news is at least our opponent really can't swing because we have plenty of ways to block. All right, we will play our forest. And we're just gonna have to pass here. We're gonna be very passive for a little while, everybody, so I hope you're gonna have to strap in. You might wanna get a sandwich. This might take a while. <laughs> in any case, as soon as we can get at least get one of our key cards. Oh boy, here comes Shield Rid. Well, in that case, let's cycle away our headquarters now to draw a card. It's another tower defense. Not what we quite wanted, but that's okay. I still believe we can get there with what we got. Keep gaining some life. Draw a card. Okay, well, now we're in business. So here's what we were coming here for. Assault formation. So with that, now we can definitely start swinging here. Down to 13. The only downside, however, is that Shieldred is going to be a real pain to deal with. But hopefully we can at least fight our way through this. There you go, swing with Shieldred. We'll take the damage, of course. Down to 16. They sacrifice the blood token to draw a card. They gain life. Okay, well, they're definitely in this still. Put another land down. Two more cards. Graveyard Trespasser. They eat a card. Gain some more life. We gain life. We draw. Caretaker. Okay. We're gonna swing here and put a little more pressure on our opponent. Will they block? Good question. All right. Well, we came here to do some damage, so tower defense push those out of the way. 
They're back up to 20. All right, one card left. What do they have? I have no idea. But if they swing here, okay, well, they can swing. That's fine. We're down to 10, so we at best have a turn and a half to turn this game around. Caretaker. Putting down the Caretaker. At the very least, this gives us a blocker for a turn, so we can swing here. Will they turn on their Hive of the Eye Tyrant? They do. They block the Gnome. They're down to 15. We gain a life and draw a card. But we also get pinged here, which is very annoying, but that's okay, everybody. Market Gnome number two. At the very least, now we can actually block now the Shieldred, so they actually can't really swing recklessly against us. Thoughtsies. Okay, well, I think they're going to take away our tower defense, which is going to be sad, but that's okay. Oh, they took away that Tamiyo safekeeping. Interesting. Okay, well, that's a choice. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. We draw here. Next please ram again. Oh, wow, our opponent gave up here. All right, well, that was awesome. Not quite exactly how I was expecting to win, but I'll take that win. So, yeah, okay. I guess this deck actually can do stuff. Sweet. All right, my fiery friends, here we go. Are our butts big and tough enough to beat our opponent down? Well, you got me. Well, we're about to find out. And also, I don't think anybody else is ever going to say that when a match, but you get what I'm trying to say here. In any case, so we got our Broker's Initiate. We have Awkward Mana, but that's fine because we also have an Assault Formation. So I think we can keep this, and we should be okay with what we have. All right. Headquarters is down. All right. Go to the end of the bow here. Okay, so maybe they're a aggro deck here? That's okay for us. That actually helps us out quite a bit. So, with that, we will play Market Gnome. And we will pass here. Okay, it looks like it's going to be an ag moderate aggro for sure, but that's good actually for us. This is actually the kind of match we want to fight against. Robber the Rich. They can swing if they want to. We just block here. Um, I mean, you can't really beat a opponent <laughs> against this. I don't know why they did that. They couldn't block it, but okay, whatever. I don't know what our opponent was thinking there, but that's fine. In any case, Assault Formation. And we will play Broker's Initiate. No attacks yet. We want to build up the board first just a smidge. That's okay. Okay. Castle Embrith. Carry Rev Skyship Raider. Swing here. All right, well, that's fine. I can do that. That's okay. We'll take one. Even if they blow this up, which they don't. Okay, well, this is actually turning out a little bit better than I thought. So with that, we'll pump up our creatures. We go swinging here. We go swinging with nine power. Woo! Okay, wow. Now the deck is definitely doing what we wanted to do. This is sweet. Okay, I think we can beat our opponent here. But unless if they have a really big swing here, they're still pretty far behind. If our opponent swings, we actually can win. Okay. They make their monkey. Do they have... Ooh, they do have Ember Cleave. Okay, well, that's fine, actually. So, they pump up their Burning Tree Emissary. We'll just... Tamio Safekeeping now. Give us a little bit of extra life. Just a sponge a hit. Down to 10. But we're fine. We're actually doing okay right here. So, with that, we put down another... Land... Pump up the Assault Formation here. We swing. Oh, actually, hold on one second. Okay, okay, hold on. Keep the Gnome back. Down to six. Okay. We have to hold back at least for one turn against the Burning Tree Emissary. Just one turn. Just one. Robber of the Rich. Pony goes swinging. They make a monkey. We will block Burning Tree Emissary for this. Unless they have another Ember Cleave. A few moments later... Wow, they have another Ember Cleave. Oh, come on, opponents. Oh, boy. Okay. So we go down to... Okay. We unfortunately lost there. Wow, the gnome didn't die, so it didn't clear off the life gain for us. Well, not the most expected play I had, but... Well, we'll get them next time. That was unfortunate, though. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Can we get our win with our Toughness Matters deck? And, well, this is okay if we actually had a untap land so we're gonna mulligan come on deck okay so this is actually not bad here let's keep this hand we can make this work so with that 
I'm going to take a risk and we'll put away the Tamiyo safekeeping. So with that, one's got a mountain. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be a aggro deck here, which is fine. Sparrow's headquarters down. Opponent playing Bone Crusher Giant. They swing. Down to 16. Alright, Broker's Hideout. So Planes. Nyx Fleece Ram. So we can block definitely for sure for a bit, but I'm assessing if our opponent's going to be a little cranky here. They're going to want to try to start blocking here. But the good news is... Oh wait, I forgot. We can't can't get any life off of the Ferocidon. Well, this stinks. Well, this is actually going to suck a little bit, but that's okay, everybody. That's okay. So here's our plan B around this. High alert. No attacks yet. At the very least now, combat is going to be a lot harder for our opponent here. Goblin Chain Whirler. Ooh, we actually got a counter on that. That's awkward. Okay. Down to 12. No life gained, unfortunately, but that's okay. So with that, planes. Caretaker. No attacks. Bone Crusher Giant hitting it. Oh wow, we're really gonna lose our ram here, aren't we? Okay, so with that. We have to block here the Ferocidon. So they're obviously gonna kill that Nyx Fleece Ram. There's no way around that one. killed it but we do get that raptor out of the way so with that ooh, we got another mixed fleece ram okay we're not we're not dead yet everybody brokers hideout gain a forest gain some life back pass the turn okay we're down but we're not out everybody bone crusher giant second bone crusher giant but our opponent can't swing. I mean, they can, but okay. Phew, okay. We're not down yet, everybody. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, we got another Floram. Okay, well. Let's play the game of Ba-Ram you against your opponent here, because we we actually might stabilize here. Wow. I did not think we were going to actually stabilize. Okay, well, now we're in a better spot, which is nice. Opponent. Ooh, they go swinging it all. They're getting a little frisky here. But what do they have? Okay, we'll find out right now. So with that, block with the chain roller. Block with there. And block the Soul Scar Mage. What do you got, opponent? Lightning Strike. Okay, well, let's see. Okay, wait, wait, can we survive this? Okay. We take damage here. And Okay, hold on. Okay. We then protect ourselves, give us some life. Barely stabilize here. Okay. We're not too shabby now. This is actually good. Now we're in a good spot. Let us post out their next Bone Crusher Giant. Wow, did we just stabilize against Mono Red Aggro? Alright. So with that. Now it's our turn to swing. Okay. Now we're making a comeback, everybody. They're down to six. Okay. Oh yeah. It's all coming together. We're feeling pretty good here now. Okay, this is actually nice. They go swinging. Turn on high alert. We untap one of our rams. They sack. We block. And we block. No! God! Oh, did I... Wow. I... I can't believe I just did that right now. I did not actually click correctly there. Oh my goodness, I just threw away a match. I'm stupid. And there you have it already. So you tell me in the comments below, would you play this deck in any way, shape, or form? Would you try butt stuff with us? <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is, honestly, my overall thoughts on the deck is, I do like what the deck is trying to do, but it got a little clunky in certain areas, and you kind of saw, I, I misclicked on that last video, so that honestly I feel like could have been a win for us. But again, I'm still happy, again, overall with the deck. I was really satisfied with how well it does. Unfortunately, however, we didn't get a chance to do much with the Pride of the Hull Clay. We never really got to draw it all that much in the matches. But even so, I'm really still satisfied overall with the deck. The only downside of the course of the deck is, even at a budget, it was a little clunky since we're a three color deck to try to get exactly what we needed on time now i think of course for those of you who stuck around you know of course what's going to happen right now we're going to talk about the upgrades to the deck and i honestly know that that's going to personally fix the deck overall to show you how well the deck can really do if you go all out 
Now, as far as the upgrades to the deck, this is again where things are going to get a lot more better for the deck overall. So with the rares we can now invest in the deck, we're going to add in copies of the reality chip here, which solves one of the biggest problems we had with the deck was we don't have any real card draw. Although this card doesn't really give us card draw per se, what it definitely can do, of course, is still allow us to cast cards off the top of our library. So really awesome for us. And we don't even need to worry about the reconfigure because with our abilities, we can pump this up into a 4-4 for two mana, which is amazing for us. Also, with the upgrades, we're going to be trimming down one single copy of the Pride of the Hulk Clade, but this is, again, just to add in a single copy of Arcadius the Strategist. We don't have that many defenders actually in the deck, but at least a single copy here can also help solve the problem of drawing us cards when we do cast off our cards, such as the Hulk Clade, cards such as our Bulwark. So you basically get the idea there. Otherwise, we'll also trim down a copy of High Alert and then squeeze in Garrick's Uprising. After playing a couple of the matches we did, when we kind of awkwardly had the chump block a little bit here and there this of course will solve that problem from the sidebar by putting it into the main deck and ensuring that we can push through our damage no matter what against our opponents otherwise the majority of the other creatures and spells in the deck pretty much will stay the same as far as the land base no surprise here we definitely are going to get a lot of awesome upgrades here so of course the standard stables that you've seen before such as a jano Castle Vantress, Besaidu are all here. We're going to have to trim down now our basics just so single copies each, but that's really all we need because we're going to make room for all the shock lands that we're going to want to take advantage of. This, of course, fixes again the other problem we had, which was mana fixing in the budget deck is a little clunky, and you kind of saw it was a little awkward for us multiple times. But in any case, Hallowed Fountains, Temple Gardens, Breeding Pools, Keep the Sparrows Headquarters, pretty much all standard there. In terms of your sideboard upgrades, mostly again, we're going to add in Tokatli's Honor Guard. Since most of our deck doesn't have any ETB triggers per se, this again helps us solve that problem because we can now turn off our opponent's ETB triggers, making sure they never go off against us. We're going to trim down a Kalhotli. This means we're going to push all of our tower defenses into the sideboard so we can pull these out in best of threes if we need to do more extra damage against our opponents. And of course, keep the dusted on because again, this still works very well with how our deck works versus our opponents. And with that, here are my final thoughts I just want to give overall on the deck. If this is something that, again, if you're a person that loves aggro, this is definitely going to be right up your alley because it is completely different from anything out there when it comes to your standard typical aggro decks. However, for opponents that don't see this coming, you can get some really cool surprise wins out of nowhere. The downside, of course, as you saw in the budget form, is it is a little clunky to get it off the ground, so to speak, because, again, the mana base can be a little messy there. Having said that, of course... When it does manage to go off, it is hilariously fun, and a lot of opponents will not see this coming. So, if you are a fan of aggro decks that are off the beaten path, if you are a fan of Toughness Matters, where you can basically kind of wall off your opponent until you're ready to do a massive swing, if you are a fan of Pride of the Hullclave and its really cool ability, where you can draw basically almost half your deck when it swings after you activate it, by all means, definitely give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to get off those wins by smashing your opponent with the backside as opposed to the front, you'll have a lot of fun doing so, and I assure you, you will not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!